So we're going to do a standard underlay bioprosthetic mesh with primary myofascial closure and a unilateral uh, component separation on the left side. So we'll start here by elevating the fascia. So you have to free about uh, between three and five centimeters of fascia. So now we reach the point where we want to do the component separation. The aponeurotomy has to be between the linea semilunaris, which is the end of the rectus sheath, and the, or the effusion of the external and internal oblique are. So you can see that's the external oblique aponeurotomy. All right, so this is the surge mend, three millimeter thick, 16 by 20 piece. You can see that it's pretty stiff when it comes out, kind of like rawhide. And then um, we're gonna put it in uh, room temperature normal saline now, and you'll see uh, what happens to it over the next five minutes. Unlike some of the other dermal matrices, it rehydrates in uh, just a couple of minutes. So here's the sac, so I need to come back behind that in order to get decent fascia. So you've heard of perforator sparing techniques. So there's a good perforator right here that I can see right there. And so I'm preserving that blood supply to this skin edge and that should be enough. Okay, so I'm marking my suture line here and I'll put this about three to five centimeters back from the edge of the fascia. We're about four centimeters on this side and over on this side, we're about three centimeters. So that's about a seven centimeter combined distance uh, that we have of fascial edge to bring together in the midline. So that means the ellipse on our bioprosthetic where we'll place our sutures has to be less than seven centimeters. I usually uh, make the ellipse around the long axis of this thing because it, it optimizes the use of the material ruler. We know that we want to be about five centimeters across or so for our suture line. So we'll do something like this. And then we essentially make an ellipse. Like that, which is where the sutures end up getting placed. And then you can take off the excess product around the outside so that you're not dealing with a lot of extra material. So you notice that this material went from being uh, a very stiff material to being a, quite a pliable material, but it's still quite thick. This is a three millimeter piece. Uh, it holds the suture very well. It doesn't tear at all. So we then place our mesh, just make sure that it's where we want. So these are all uh, number one horizontal mattress sutures. And then back out through the fascia. So this one we tie up right away. And that brings the uh, bioprosthetic up to the fascia at the apex of the wound. So now we'll set the toe. So we'll get these in here. So again, through the fascia. Take the heavy force up. In and out of the material and you kind of dolphin it through. So at this point, you can kind of lay the bioprosthetic under here and sort of see how this whole thing is going to set up. So I always put my hand back behind this mesh as I place this through because I don't want to get any bowel in the way and that's why I trim off that excess part laterally. And we're just marching down and you just want to check that you're lining things up properly every once in a while. So you notice that my spacing of these stitches is relatively even. You don't want any bowel to be able to get in between any of these so we've got these nice and evenly spaced. And when we tie these, we'll make sure that there aren't any spaces. Once that's done, what you should see is 
this relatively regular line of sutures that's coming through the fascia. And then in between, you can see that the mesh has been inlaid, that it's nice and tense, and that the fascia closes easily over the top and kisses. So now uh, we're gonna close the fascia over the top. I use a number one looped Maxon. Here your suture line circumferentially goes around, including behind the umbilicus. So at this point, um, you wanna place your drains and close the skin. All right. So that ends the operation.